It's considered a classic anime that even people who aren't anime fans should watch. It also has one of the most distinct visual styles and some amazing music. That's right, my name is Tim, and today on Cartoon Hangover, we're counting down 107 facts about Cowboy Bebop. Let's get started. Number 1. Cowboy Bebop premiered in Japan on television station TV Tokyo. However, it was soon cancelled due to its adult themes, excessive violence, and low ratings. If you had to pick which one of those had the most impact, it's low ratings. Number 2. The original series broadcasted from April 3rd until June 26th in 1998, with only episodes 2, 3, 7 to 15, and 18 making it to air. Number 3. Because of the early cancellation, a special titled Mishmash Blues was created. In it, the characters provided a philosophical commentary ending with the words, This is not the end, you will see the real Cowboy Bebop someday. Number 4. And they did, as in that same year, the show was shown in its entirety from October 24th to April 24th in 1999 on the Japanese satellite network Wow Wow. Wow Wow Wow, that's a hard name. Number 5. Cowboy Bebop is credited with introducing anime to Western viewers in the early 2000s and is known as a gateway into anime. Number 6. Each episode is referred to as a session, possibly in reference to a music session, where a group of musicians come together to play a song, or in this case, hunt some bounties. Number 7. Most of the episodes in the series are named after music musical concepts or genres, such as Jupiter Jazz and Asteroid Blues. Number 8. Some episodes are named after specific songs such as The Rolling Stones, Sympathy for the Devil, and Honky Tonk Women. Fortunately, this anime didn't come out today or we'd have, I feel like, less exciting titles. Like, I mean, I guess Party Rock Anthem would be an interesting session. Number 9. Cowboy Bebop is known for blending a variety of genres including spaghetti westerns, Hong Kong action films, film noir, and sci-fi. Number 10, Cowboy Bebop is also heavily influenced by specific films as well, with Enter the Dragon, Desperado, The Crow, Reservoir Dogs, and A Better Tomorrow being just a few. Number 11, the series explores various philosophical concepts such as existentialism, existential ennui, and loneliness. So, you know, the perfect show for turning off your brain and just watching. Number 12, Cowboy Bebop was the first anime-style show to be shown as part of Cartoon Network's Adult Swim programming block in the United States. Number 13, Cowboy Bebop remains the longest anime series aired on Adult Swim. Number 14, series director Shinichiro Watanabe originally envisioned Cowboy Bebop as a movie instead of a show. Because of this, Watanabe treated each episode as a miniature film, or a session as we learned. Number 15, Watanabe's vision later saw the light of day when Cowboy Bebop the movie released in 2001 to theaters worldwide. Number 16, the movie, which takes place between episodes 22 and 23, centers on the Bebop crew stopping a terrorist attack on Mars. I don't know what it is, but apparently once we go to space we want to attack Mars a lot more than Earth, and I'm just not sure why. Number 17, in the opening credits for the Cowboy Bebop movie, several of the English voice actors make cameos, including Bo Billingsley, who played Jet, Wendy Lee, who played Faye, Steve Bloom, who plays Spike, and Gilbert Gottfried, who plays Ein. Okay, the, the last one might not be true, but imagine if it was. Number 18, the villain of the Cowboy Bebop film, Vincent Valahu, was designed by smashing together two of America's greatest musicians, Bob Dylan and Johnny Cash. Number 19, Shinichiro Watanabe also directed the anime Samurai Champloo, which was also very well received and you should totally watch it. Number 20, the animation studio Sunrise, which developed animation for Cowboy Bebop, also developed animation for Samurai Champloo. You should really, really watch this show, please. Number 21, the dark clothing color in Spike's suit was intended to reflect his state of mind. My clothing also reflects my state of mind in that it's generally disorganized and a little bit disheveled. Number 22, Spike's appearance is based off the appearance of Japanese actor Yusaku Matsuda, mostly in his famous television show, Tante Monogatari. Number 23, Spike won first place in the male character category of the Anime Grand Prix in 1998 and 1999. 99. Congrats, Spike. I think it was the pockets. Number 24, the official name for bounty hunters in Cowboy Bebop are... Cowboys. Who knew?
Number 25. Ed's self-invented full name is Edward Wong Hao Pepelu Tivruski IV. Number 26. Ed's actual birth name is Francois Appledary, which is equally difficult to say because its pronunciation is nothing like how it's spelled. Number 27. Ed's real name is finally revealed on episode 24, only two episodes away from the finale. Number 28. The name of Ed's computer is Tomato. Number 29. Ed never actually calls her computer by its name in the show but it is written on the cardboard box the computer stands on in both English and Katakana. Number 30, Ed transports her computer by balancing it on her head, which is the only way you're going to keep your hands free. Number 31, Spike is from the Red Dragon Crime Syndicate, where he met his partner and later rival, Vicious. Number 32, Spike was originally supposed to have an eye patch, but the producers vetoed it out, which makes sense because he is a cowboy, not a pirate. Number 33, Spike's right eye was replaced with a cybernetic eye and what Spike himself claimed was an accident. Number 34, you can tell which of Spike's eyes is artificial because it's slightly lighter in tone. It's also the right eye, we already said that. Number 35, Spike was the first image that popped into Watanabe's head when conceiving the show. He said that the first image that occurred to me was one of Spike, and from there I tried to build a story around him, trying to make him cool. Number 36, to achieve Spike's coolness, animation director Toshihiro Kawamoto designed Spike to look uncool when he was passive, so that when Spike kicked it into gear, he would come off as extra cool. Is that how that math works? Oh man, I was halfway there in high school and I didn't even realize it. Number 37, the producers have been quoted saying that Spike Spiegel's name was chosen because it sounded cool. Number 38, most of the cast has their own ships. Spikes is named Swordfish 2, Faze is called Red Tail, and Jet's is Hammerhead. Although Jet also technically owns the Bebop, so he has two ships. And Ed can take control of any ship she wants, so she basically has all the ships. Number 39, Spikes' ship Swordfish 2 was named after the English biplane Fairy Swordfish. Number 40, the main ship in the series, the Bebop, was purchased secondhand by Jet as a fishing vessel. After some upgrades, the Bebop went from catching fish to catching crooks. Number Number 41, Jet originally worked as an ISSP officer on the moon Ganymede, but later retired after getting his arm blown off by his partner, Fad. Nice going, Fad. Hey everyone, taking a quick break from the facts just to let you know what's coming up this next week. So on Thursday on Channel Frederator, we have 107 facts about the classic Beauty and the Beast. Then on Saturday, also on Channel Frederator, we have Saturday morning cartoons where we feature the best and greatest cartoons from members of our network. And if you love animation, you should totally check it out. Then back on Tuesday on Cartoon Hangover again, we have 107 facts about Spirited Away. And now back to Cowboy Bebop. Number 42, Spike and Jet are designed as being opposites, with Spike being thin and dressy and Jet as bulky and more casual. Does that mean that Spike is really, really cool when he's passive, but then when he kicks it into gear, he's just totally lame? Number 43, Spike's English voice actor, Stephen Bloom, used film noir imagery to get into the right mindset to voice Spike correctly, which doesn't really make sense to me because Spike doesn't talk like a film noir character. I knew there was a problem when that dame walked into my office with a knife in her back. Number 44, Bloom has also also stated that some of the most difficult scenes to portray in Cowboy Bebop are scenes showing Spike's vulnerability, which makes sense because in a character designed entirely to look cool, it's probably pretty hard to look vulnerable. Number 45, Cowboy Bebop was adapted into two manga series, Cowboy Bebop Shooting Star in 1998 and just Cowboy Bebop in 1999. Number 46, the manga Cowboy Bebop Shooting Star was originally titled Cowboy Bebop, with the Shooting Star subtitle arriving with its English release in 2003. Number 47, despite taking place in the space western setting of 2071, Cowboy Bebop's plot does not venture out of our solar system, which makes a lot of sense because getting gates to a place would be really hard to do outside the solar system. Number 48, series director Watanabe created a unique tagline for the promotion of the series which called it a new genre unto itself. Watanabe later remarked that the tagline was just an exaggeration, which if people bought into it, you shouldn't go back on. Like, people seem to think that that's true, so just roll with it, man. Number 49, some of the planets in Cowboy Bebop are modeled off places on Earth, with the moon of Ganymede resembling a port city and Mars containing theme parks and shopping malls. Here's a question, though. In Cowboy Bebop universe, is Pluto actually a planet or not? 
Number 50, Yoko Kano, who does the music for the series, specifically created her band Seatbelts in order to make music for the series. And oh my god, the music in this series is fantastic. Number 51, Kano claims that the music was one of the first parts of Cowboy Bebop to begin production, before other aspects such as characters and story had been finalized. Because honestly, you should just make a show around that music. Number 52, the famous opening song Tank is also a blending of genres, containing a a big band jazz piece performed in a Latin hard bop style with rhythm that combines both a double bass and bongo drums. Number 53, the small vocal introduction of Tank is done by Kano's longtime collaborator, Tim Jensen. Number 54, the ending theme for Cowboy Bebop titled The Real Folk Blues features vocals by Mai Yamane and is one of the few songs on the soundtrack to be sung in Japanese. Number 55, The Real Folk Blues is used as the ending theme for every episode except for sessions 13 and 26, so the halfway point and the ending point. Number 56, Cowboy Bebop's released music covers over seven soundtrack albums, a live recording album, a remix album, box sets, singles, and even vinyls. Number 57, Yoko Kano also created a compilation album titled Space Biocharge, which contains unreleased takes of Cowboy Bebop songs. Number 58, Cowboy Bebop's first soundtrack album titled, you guessed it, Cowboy Bebop received a 5 out of 5 rating from all music. Number 59, the ending theme of the special Mishmash Blues titled Recover the Sky of Day was never featured on any Cowboy Bebop soundtrack. Number 60, Mishmash Blues is also known as Session XX, and it was never televised in the United States. Which if we're following the typical tradition of animes that don't air in Japan, it's probably way more awesome. Number 61, there's also a Session Zero which was included in the Cowboy Bebop Remix box set. The session, however, features no new footage and is essentially a Q&A piece with the cast and crew, interwoven with various clips from the show. Number 62, Cowboy Bebop was Watanabe's first project as a solo director as all the other work he had done at the time was as a co-director. Number 63, Watanabe's main inspiration for Cowboy Bebop was the manga and anime Lupin the Third. Number 64, in session 15, you can quickly see Lupin the Third's car. Potential crossover? Fingers crossed. Number 65, Cowboy Bebop originated as a sponsor for Bandai's toy division with the intention of selling spacecraft toys. So if you ever doubted if a show designed to sell toys could be good, look no further than Cowboy Bebop. Although I would still maintain that the Ninja Turtles was a good toy show. Number 66, upon hearing about the toy deal, Watanabe remembered his only direction was, so long as there's a spaceship in it, you can do whatever you want. And boy, did he. Number 67, however, upon seeing early footage, Bandai pulled out and Bandai Visual sponsored the project, allowing Watanabe free reign on the development of the series. Number 68, during the development of Cowboy Bebop, Watanabe would attempt to rally the animation staff by claiming the show would be memorable up to three decades later. Watanabe has expressed his happiness in being proven right. Although the real mark of achievement here would be if the show was memorable up until the point that the show would actually be taking place. Number 69. Mars is used the most in Cowboy Bebop storylines, as the cultural and setting producer Satoshi Toba explained that other planets were unexpectedly difficult to use. Well, the other planets don't have flowing water, and it turns out that Jupiter is made mostly of gas, so yeah, that's not surprising at all. Number 70. In the final episode, the dramatic roof scene was originally going to occur on Venus, but the staff fell back on Mars once again. Number 71. Two video games were created for the show, Cowboy Bebop for the PlayStation and Cowboy Bebop Serenade of Reminiscence for the PlayStation 2. Number 72, the Cowboy Bebop games were never released outside of Japan, with an English version of Serenade of Reminiscence being planned, but later cancelled. Number 73, Cowboy Bebop is currently ranked at number 24 on IMDb's top 250 list for television, and is also the highest ranking anime on the list. Number 74, American film director Ryan Johnson has cited Cowboy Bebop as a large visual influence for his films, most notably being seen in his 2005 film, Brick. Number 75, Ayn's vocalizations were done by Jack, a cardigan Welsh corgi owned by the show's producer, Kazuhiko Ikiguchi, not by Gilbert Gottfried, as we had implied before. And by implied, I mean explicitly stated. Number 76, even though Ayn was voiced by a cardigan Welsh corgi, his official breed is a Pembroke Welsh corgi, vastly different, yet equally adorable. Number 77, Spike and Jet's aliases are Swimming Bird and Black Dog, respectively. 
Number 78, series writer Keiko Nobumoto wrote both Cowboy Bebop and its film. She also wrote episode 16 of Samurai Champloo. Have we mentioned that show yet? I don't feel like we've mentioned that show yet. If we haven't mentioned it yet, you should totally watch it. Number 79, Session 11, titled Toys in the Attic, has many references to the Alien franchise, such as handheld trackers, arming sequences, and the creature's disposal. Fortunately for us, no chest bursting. Not again! Number 80. In the episode The Real Folk Blues, a man named Alfredo is seen meeting his mother at an airport. This man is Punch from the Big Shots commercials seen throughout the series. Number 81. Many of the street signs in the series use English, Japanese, and Persian lettering. Number 82. Session 2, titled Stray Dog Strut, features a fight between Spike and Abdul Hakim. This is a reference to the fight scene in Game of Death between Bruce Lee and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Spike even uses Lee's famous Jeet Kune Do fighting style in the scene. Abdul Hakim not as successful as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Number 83, according to the store owner in episode 2, Ayn is worth about two Wulongs, which we know is incorrect, but this raises some questions about how much a Wulong is actually worth, because you can definitely see Spike order a meal for 20 Wulongs, and I have a hard time believing that any Corgi is worth a tenth of a meal. Number 84, the three old men seen throughout the series are named Antonio, Carlos, and Jobim. This is a reference to Antonio Carlos Jobim, a famous musician who influenced much of Cowboy Bebop's soundtrack. I need to listen to him, apparently. Number 85, most characters have their own unique pistol. Spike's pistol is the Jericho 941, Jet's pistol is the Walther P99, and Face pistol is a Glock 30 45. We have some spoiler facts coming up. Number 86, Faye is is 77 years old chronologically. I hope I look that good at 77. Number 87. Many past events in the series have strangely occurred three years ago, like Spike and Jet's partnership, Faye waking up from cryofreeze, and Ed's departure from the orphanage. Number 88. Speaking of cryofreeze, Faye was injured in a space shuttle accident in 2014. Because of the technological limitations at the time, the doctors threw her in cryo until medicine had progressed. 2014 has passed, and I think we'd be doing well if we could manage cryofreeze. We've disappointed Futurama and Cowboy Bebop. We gotta get on cryofreeze technology. Number 89, the city in Faye's memories bear a striking resemblance to modern-day Singapore. Number 90, in Session 14, the moves in the chess game are real moves that famous chess player Paul Morphy played in 1857 and 1858. Number 91, in Episode 24, Ed's father's name is Apple Dairy, and his assistant's name is McIntyre. This is a reference to Apple and Mac computers. Number 92, Ed's father's name is Apple Dairy Shini's Hisop Lutfen, which means, excuse me, check please, in Turkey. Number 93, in session 23, during the Brain Dream commercial, many controllers are shown in the garbage. Among them are Sega Genesis, NES, SNES, and PlayStation looking controllers. Which just goes to show you that old systems hold up way better than newer counterparts. You don't get a red ring of death on an SNES. Number 94, in session 17, a man appears to be dragging a coffin behind him in the street. This is a reference to popular spaghetti western Django, where the protagonist also carries a coffin through the street. Except Django's coffin had a machine gun in it. Number 95, the Japanese titles for sessions 11 and 20 are Dark Knight of Heavy Rock and Clown's Requiem, respectively. Number 96, before Ed left the Bebop crew, her final message was a large smiley face written into the floor with the words, bye bye, which, yeah, is a totally valid message to leave when you're leaving. Number 97, Ed's parting gift to Spike is a pinwheel. Number 98, the three things Spike hates most are kids, animals, and women with attitudes. Funny enough, Ed, Ein, and Faye join the crew later in the series. Lucky him. Him. Number 99, Faye's cryo-freezing operation cost around 30 million Wulongs. We still don't know how much a Wulong is worth, but apparently that's 15 million Corgis? Number 100, speaking of Wulongs, the same currency is also used in the sci-fi anime Space Dandy, which shares a lot of the same staff from Cowboy Bebop. Number 101, according to Spike, Faye sings off-key, but we never hear Spike sing, so maybe people in glass houses and all that. Number 102, before making Cowboy Bebop, Series director Shinichiro Watanabe was most famous for co-directing the 1994 military anime Macross Plus. Number 103, in Session 6, the character named Fatty Rivers is a reference to legendary blues musician Muddy Waters, who influenced the music style of the show. Lots of people influenced the music style of the show. Number 104, Spike's fate is deliberately left ambiguous and Watanabe has not confirmed whether he lived or died. No matter what happened, the series has ended here, as Watanabe hasn't stated he 
he'd be bringing it back anytime soon. So long, Space Cowboy. Number 105, Session 19 features a gang of Starship pirates whose three members are named George, Herman, and Ruth. George Herman Ruth is the full name of famous baseball player Babe Ruth, which is just more proof that every single tiny detail in this show is super awesome and cool. Number 106, in Session 3, the casino that Spike and Jet visit is called the Spiders from Mars Casino, just like David Bowie's famous album Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. And finally, number 107, Phase Cryo Tank has the serial number NCC-1701B, which is also the serial number of the third Enterprise from Star Trek. I would not be surprised to learn that people had this as a tattoo. Thank you for watching Tuned Up's 107s, where we cover everything you've ever wanted to know about your favorite cartoons. If you liked this video, you can go ahead and check out other 107 fact videos that we have over here. Go ahead and click on one of those. I can wait. Can't really wait. My legs are hurting super bad from squatting, so I'm gonna stand up normally, and you guys should remember, Frederator loves you. <laughs>